And so whatever a person's view, there is something that everyone agreed on over the last few years, and that is that the best thing to resist disease is a strong immune system. You can't deny that. That a strong immune disease, a, a strong immune system is the very best basis to resist disease. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. How can you boost this immune system? And also it's important to know what takes it down. We will gain insights from Barbara O'Neill, a renowned naturopath and health educator with decades of experience in natural health and wellness. Today, Barbara will delve into a fascinating aspect of our body's defense system, the immune system, and explore the critical roles that the ears, nose, eyes, and mouth play in protecting us from illness. These often overlooked parts of our body are the first line of defense against pathogens, acting as barriers and gateways for potential invaders. Barbara will explain how each of these organs contributes to the immune response, from the mucus in our nose that traps harmful particles to the tears in our eyes that flush out irritants. She'll also discuss how maintaining the health of these areas through proper care, diet, and lifestyle choices can enhance our overall immune function. Whether you're looking to better understand how your body defends itself or seeking natural ways to boost your immunity, Barbara's insights will provide you with practical knowledge and tools to support your health. Let's listen to Barbara tell us more about our immune system. The first, the first uh, part of our immune system, when you look at the human body, is the skin. The skin is a covering and the skin covers and protects the body from out, outside pathogens. So the skin is part of the immune system. But let's go to the head where we see seven holes. You've got two ears and two eyes and two nostrils and a mouth. Barbara will now tell us a story about your ears. Now let's look at the ears first. There's an eardrum there. A man emailed me recently and said, you know, I've got a lot of pain. I've got this hole in the eardrum. And I said, well, if you have an ear infection and the eardrum bursts to let the pus out, that usually heals very quickly. But if the eardrum has had physical damage, it can be very difficult to heal. And the eardrum is a protection that's part of your immune system. And then I got the email back. He was cleaning his ear with those buds, those ear buds, and punctured a hole in his eardrum. Ah. So I said, no more. What do you call them? Q-tips? Is that, is that another way? I'll tell you a scary story. A guest told me this. He used to see his mother and father cleaning their ears with him. So he put them in his ears and he's walking along, little five-year-old with them out of his ears. His brother came along and went. When he came to us, he was in his 40s and he was almost deaf. So when you get physical damage to those eardrums, it's, it's uh, very difficult to heal. Can you put anything in the ear? Not if there's a broken eardrum because that eardrum is part of your immune system. It's actually protecting the inside of the ear. You might have read that the smallest thing that should go in the ear is about the size of your elbow. Got that? <laughs> we should not be putting anything in, into our ear. How can you rinse it out? You can put your head on the side and let the water pound in there from the shower and then wiggle your ears. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, you can warm that and pour that in the ear. It's pretty exciting. It goes all bubbly and you get these exciting bubble noises and that can clear it out. And also hot coconut oil, not hot enough to burn you of course, but warm coconut oil can also loosen that. Some people definitely produce more wax than other people and have to maybe have their eye on that. How about the next body part? Let's go to the uh, eyes now. The eyes are an incredible creation. If something hits, can you see we've got those two burn bones there that can protect? But if it's smaller, and anything that goes anywhere near the eye, the eye naturally blinks. 
and that's a protection. It blinks and also if something does get in, then you've got a lubricant there. And that lubricant, basically, if it's a bug, it, it drowns it. <laughs> And if something's in your eye, I think we all know, you just make your eye go around the world a few times and it'll come to the corner and it can be taken out. So there's a nice protection in the eye. What other body part is important to the immune system? What about the nose? The nose is a very important part of our breathing because that's where the air should go in and should go out. And I'll look at this in more detail in the next lecture when we look at respiratory. But the nose purifies the air, it warms the air. And there are little hairs there so that if the air that you're breathing has some particles on it, it's heavy. If the air has no particles of dust on it, it's light and it goes straight down into your trachea. But if it happens to have any particles of dust, it's heavier. And when it's heavier, it ricochets all around the nostril, shoots around, causing that particle of dust to fall off it. Then the air comes light and then it goes into the trachea and down into the lungs. And even in the bronchioles, there are little hairs there. So if something actually does happen to um, bypass that, and the only way it could bypass that is if someone's breathing through the mouth. And that should not happen. We should be breathing only through the nose. So if a person's mouth breathing and the air is not purified, then you've got tiny little hairs that are in the, in the bronchioles that are ever pushing up, up, and that's where we, uh, we, we cough it out. That brings us to the next body part. Barbara will tell us plays an essential role in our immune system. Now let's come to the mouth. So the mouth also has systems in there to protect. Uh, the mouth has a lot of saliva there. And when we swallow, that swallowing closes the trachea and it opens the esophagus for the food to go down there. Is there another line of defense? And then there's another amazing a line of defense in the stomach, which is hydrochloric acid. So in my book, Self Heal by Design, I've got a chapter called The Stomach's Secret Weapon, Hydrochloric Acid. So hydrochloric acid does connect with pepsinogen to release pepsin, which breaks down our protein. And that process only happens in a very acid environment. That's why the stomach should always be acid. Well, it's not acid when we wake up, but when we smell food, uh, put our breakfast together, the brain knows food's coming, then hydrochloric acid starts to be released. And hydrochloric acid plus pepsinogen, they unite to produce pepsin and pepsin breaks down the protein. It's protein that's broken down in the stomach. Barbara will now tell us about another role which hydrochloric acid plays. But I'd like to look at hydrochloric acid's other roles. And hydrochloric acid's other roles are as antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal. So if we happen to eat some food that has maybe bacteria or yeast or fungus on it, the hydrochloric acid can kill that. I have a book at home. I'd heard references to this book in some articles I read. It was written in 1833. So our secretary went to Amazon and they found one copy in a state college library in the southern states of the US. It's called The Observations on the Physiology of Digestion by Dr. William Beaumont. And Dr. William Beaumont, he was a young doctor in the very early 1800s, and he was called to an accident in a trading store. A young man called Alexis St. Martin had sustained a gunshot wound to the stomach. It had gone off for some reason, and it blew part of his side out. He was only 18 at the time, and Dr. Beaumont assessed him and said he would not live. But every day when he visited him in hospital, he was recovering. And Alexis St. Martin totally recovered. But I'll tell you something very interesting. In his recovery process, twice, a big tumour like a boil formed 
burst and a two inch piece of rib came out. So when it burst and the two inch piece of rib came out, what also came out? A lot of pus. What's pus? I'll tell you, these guys are doing a good job. <laughs> There's a two inch piece of rib there. Just imagine if, 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 if he'd taken antibiotics that settled that infection down, how the ribs, how the bit rib gonna get out now? Now I do acknowledge that in a crisis, in an extreme crisis, an antibiotic can save a life, but you have gotta ask why? Why, why. why did this tumor arise and it burst, a two inch piece of rib came out and that happened twice. What an amazing body we have. And after that, it healed. But once it healed, it ever had a hole in the stomach. And it had like a little, it was like a mouth and it had like a, a little bit of skin over it. Dr. Beaumont said in his book, he could have stitched it, but Alexis and Martin said, I don't want, want you to do any, I, I, anything else I can live with. But what Dr. Beaumont did, he started to do experiments on their stomach. And Dr. Beaumont's work is still quoted in anatomy and physiology books today. He changed the nutrition world because he proved that digestion is a chemical process. Up until that time, they thought it was mostly a mechanical process of the chewing and then the massaging, but it was a, it's a chemical process. What Dr. Beaumont did, he meticulously documented his findings. He'd get a piece of uh, silk thread, put a bit of food on it, put it in the hole, take it out after an hour, put it back in, take it out after two hours, took it in and out, and he discovered that digestion takes approximately three and a half to four hours. Then the stomach loves an hour break, and that's why we should be leaving five to six hours between meals. And that's what time-restricted eating talks about now. You've heard of the 5-2 diet, the intermittent fasting, eating two meals in a 24-hour period, six hours apart. Barbara will give us her final thoughts about our immune system. See, we live in an amazing body with, that's got an inbuilt ability to heal itself when you give it the right conditions. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.